So this is Mixpanel. I'm sure many of you on the call are familiar with what you can do in Mixpanel now, what you've always been able to do very well in Mixpanel. But just to do, I guess, a quick one minute overview of some of the of strengths and use cases for Mixpanel today for anyone who might not be familiar. Uh, Mixpanel is really good at taking in your event-based data and allowing you to answer questions and get to value quickly and understand your product and your users at a deeper level. So for example, I can go ahead and select data about my purchases and I can quickly go and break down by what product people are purchasing. I can go ahead and you know change the visualization, do comparisons to prior, you know, prior months, percentage overall, things of that nature um, very quickly and easily here in the insights report. I'm also able to build out funnels very quickly and efficiently as well. If I tap over to our funnel report, we could go ahead and build something out. For example, sign up and then purchase, see where our users are doing well, where they're dropping off. Again, how it's performing month over month, change over time and seeing points of friction in key user journeys. I could go ahead and also open a flow, which is our third core report. And a flow essentially is going to go ahead and map out the span of all possible user journeys from one touch point to another, answering the question, what are my users doing to get from one key conversion point to the next, when maybe that won't be totally clear to you without using a tool like this. And finally, we have a retention report, which allows you to say for people completing one key action, how well do they retain and come back and complete another key action after they complete that first one? What is our overall net retention based on a customizable definition for retention that you yourself can create? So this is some of what Mixpanel can do today. Um, but really, what wh what is the key common denominator here? What is what is the same of all this? Is that it's all to the kind of down funnel uh, in the product uh, metrics and questions that we're asking here. You remember back in the slides that Perla showed that really the whole user journey, the, the entire user funnel also has this top of funnel piece where they're initially coming to the site. They're engaging with an ad. They're searching for you organically on Google. And maybe it's important to know how that piece can impact some of the down funnel pieces as well. And now with some of these new marketing analytics features in Mixpanel, you can actually go and do that. And so the first thing I want to demonstrate in that kind of top of funnel piece is now you can actually go ahead and ingest ad data into Mixpanel. So how does that work? Let's go ahead and click into this ad spend event. And you'll notice when we do that, we get this kind of boring line uh, that is the total ad spend over the last seven days, but it looks like it's just one per thing. The reason it looks like it's just one event per thing is that this is actually a dump of ad data, one dump per day of different metrics that we're pulling from different ad providers and throwing into Mixpanel. So if we look at the properties on this ad data event, you'll notice we have things like clicks, cost, network, impressions. These are things that an ad network like Google ads, like Facebook ads will provide to you in aggregate on a daily basis. We have ways now to take those and ingest them into Mixpanel, allowing you to actually go ahead and conduct some marketing type analysis and build marketing metrics off of those figures. So an example of how you might do this, and let's actually try to do something with this ad spend event now, is we can go ahead and let's say, look at the total cost per day. Now, this is a little bit more interesting. Now, instead of just looking at that generic line that didn't have much meaning, we can see how much we're actually spending every day on ads. Are we spending too much? Are we spending too little? Are we staying within budget? Uh, we can also add another metric in. Let's go ahead and add the other ad spend event and let's select maybe clicks this time. So now we have cost and clicks on the same graph. Something you guys might be very familiar with is a very common marketing metric called cost per click. And we can go ahead and build this out now very easily from the data we just threw up on this graph here. So we're going to go into the formulas tab. We're going to do cost per click CPC, and we're going to go ahead and type A, meaning that A up there, divide by B, the B down there. We're going to apply the formula. And what do we have now? We have a cost per click metric day by day. How much are we actually spending? What is the efficiency of our ad spend overall? Is it trending up? Is it trending down? We have visibility into that now. Something I do want to call out is that, well, I built out cost per click here. The, the kind of 
flow that I just did to do that is very similar for really any common marketing metric you might have. Cost per impression, cost per 1,000 impressions, return on ad spend, things of that nature. You can simply build out by taking in any, any numbers that are spit out by these ad providers, throwing them into Mixpanel, and just doing some very basic math on them to build out which metrics do you care about. This is really cool because you're not stuck to a, say, a set of four or five metrics that we allow you to have. You're allowed to build out your own metrics, including ones that might not be so more common, but that have meaning and value to you and your organization. Something else that's actually very interesting and a key differentiator from Mixpanel from, say, like a Google Analytics uh, is something like this. Let me switch over to a bar graph to make this abundantly clear. And let me actually go ahead and break down by network here. You might be wondering what this network is. Well, it's actually which ad network did this ad data come from? You'll notice I'm actually ingesting from four ad networks here. And I can see side by side, where am I spending ad data most efficiently? This is cool and unique. The reason for that is if you're living in Google Analytics, for example, they don't want you using Twitter ads. They don't want you using LinkedIn ads. Absolutely not. They want to keep you in the Google ecosystem. So as a result, you're going to have a tough time trying to get this kind of cross comparison analysis. I hear a lot of people today do this by, you know, pulling up a tab of every individual dashboard and all their things and tabbing over and crunching the numbers. And it seems painful. It seems slow. It seems inefficient. Something like this solves for that kind of problem that allows you to do cross network comparisons, not just with the numbers are spitting out on you, but with any other metric that you build out in mix panel that you care about the most and really get a gauge on not just your marketing efficiency overall, but on a network by network basis. Something else very interesting that I do want to call out, and let me go back to maybe a line chart for this and clear out some of this stuff. Um, go back to the line chart. Uh, we can go ahead and say, have this cost that we already have now. Maybe we're curious if cost is actually affecting some down, of fun, down funnel things. When we spend more on ads, for example, do we get more signups, right? We can ask that question now and we can actually go ahead and see if one is actually impacting the other. And we can maybe even create a metric down here of, you know, cost per signups, right? Not just key marketing metrics, but actually look at with, with some ad, ad spend metrics, do they actually impact the number of down funnel events that happen? That's really difficult to do. And it's something that's not an event-based analytics tool like Mixpanel that allows you to ingest ad data. Very, very difficult to get at those numbers. Mixpanel makes it really, really easy. So quickly to summarize what we've seen so far, we've done a quick overview of what some of the strengths of Mixpanel and some of the capabilities of Mixpanel that have always been there. We've seen that we can ingest ad data into Mixpanel. We've seen how we can take the different pieces of, of aggregate values that these ad networks provide and put them all into a mixed panel event, build out metrics with them, compare them across network, as well as compare them to different product metrics, down funnel metrics at the same time. So that's one new piece of our new marketing suite, but there's a couple more as well. And another main one, which I think is very prevalent and some of you may be you know, asking about is, okay, this is all great, but how do I know that people who came from these certain ad networks and from these you know, different ads and from direct traffic actually did the conversion events that I want, and then I'm attributing them in the way I want to attribute them. So that's what I want to get into next. And so if I click onto this tab over here, we're actually going to have to look at a bit of a different table here. Just to orient yourself, I've selected three key events over here. The first visit a user has, when they complete a sign up, and when they purchase for the first time. These are, I'd say, three key common touch points and, you know, a generic product. Um, we're breaking down this in a table by UTM campaign, AKA UTM parameters that are passed through the URL when a user visits a site. In this case, what campaign that we ran are they coming from? And what percentage of those the conversion for each of these touch points are distributed across these campaigns? Now you may be thinking, Shane, this is great and all, but how am I defining what, what conversion gets distributed? How, how am I defining that, you know, this gets distributed evenly, or we just want the last touch point in the user journey to get credit for first purchase, but we want the first touch point in a user journey to get credit for first visit, things of that nature. And that kind of goes into the problem of multi-touch attribution. How do we have a user journey with five different touch points 
and then distribute credit for one event across those five different touch points, for example. Well, we can actually go ahead and do that in Nick's panel now. So if I scroll down here to this breakdown tab, you'll notice we are breaking down by and attributing by UTM campaign. Uh, what that essentially does is it now enables these new tags here on all these events. And if I click into one of these, you'll notice there's a ton of different multi-touch attribution models that I can now put on one of these events. So for example, right now, we're applying a U-shaped model shown here to the sign up completed event. We can make it a last touch, credit 100% of the conversion to the last touch point, first touch, 100% to the first touch point, participation, time decay, linear, U-shaped, J-shaped. We have a ton of different models that come out of the box depending on how you think it's best to distribute the credit for that conversion. And if none of these work, you can even create your own custom model as well. So this is just an example of how multi-touch attribution can work and how the attribution capabilities in Mixpanel are now very robust and probably pretty serviceable in a lot of cases to more complex attribution questions that you might have. And again, it's allowing you to fine tune and make sure that the credit for these conversions are distributed accurately in the way you want so that you're able to make really, really high quality analysis on what is actually driving conversions the most and where should we invest our marketing resources more. All right, so at this point, we've gone over ad data, seeing what you can build that with that. We've gone over multi-touch attribution, seen the questions you can answer with that and the kind of reports you can build with that. But we're all kind of still delving in the world of feature functionality. We're not really saying, okay, how do we take these and scale them up into a full-on marketing dashboard or a full-on marketing table where we can go ahead and see all the metrics we care about all at once? Because what marketers often like to do is set, set their metrics up and then just have an easy, efficient way to check them, to digest them, to change them, to tweak things as time goes on. So that's the next piece I want to get into, which is what is the end state once you go ahead and use these features to build out reports and iterate on them and, and get into a kind of finalized state, if you will. So one example of what this might look like uh, is something like this. This is a table actually I built out because it's very similar to what many marketers are used to today in say a Google Analytics. We have a bunch of different marketing metrics here at the top, sessions, cost per click, transactions, revenue, return on ad spend, et cetera, et cetera. We can see them across, you know, we're breaking down by campaign again, attributing by campaign. And we can see how for each of these different campaigns, these numbers vary depending on what source the user actually came from. Uh, and we're applying some of these attribution models again, just like we were before. So this is nice. And it's giving me a view of all the marketing metrics I care about all in one place. But quite personally, I think we can do better. I think that this is an okay end state, but I think that Mixpanel allows us to do so much more with our boards feature. And so instead of you know pushing you towards something like this, which I wanted to show and show that it is possible, I think something more along the lines of this could be a potentially more visually appealing and more functionally appealing as well, where it's a full on marketing board where it's more organized. Those metrics are split up into different reports we're able to have context on the board explaining what these reports are and what questions they're trying to answer. And it's more visually appealing and you're able to quickly get to the specific metric or specific question that you want answered on the board efficiently. You'll notice we're able to build out all sorts of different reports, expanding on the one or two examples that we worked in before. Things like return on ad spend trend lines, clicks by ad platform, return on ad spend by source. You know, engagement questions like what are the top pages visited by a user? What is our bounce rate? How do campaigns impact conversion? That was the, you know, conversions by UTM campaign report we were in. We can look at time to first conversion. There's a whole suite of reports that you can build out with some of these features that we just showed and some of the features already available in Mixpanel today to get to an end state like this. So now some of you might be probably thinking, Shane, this is great. This looks awesome. I want to get here but I wanna make sure this isn't gonna be an incredibly painful experience to get here. And I'm not just gonna be get thrown some you know, blank board and be told, all right, just build stuff out. you know. And it might take me a week, it might take me a month, who knows. Uh, to alleviate that problem, we actually have a marketing template available in Mixpanel. And so just to quickly showcase that, let me actually go ahead and try to build out a new board. And there you'll notice there's this button here, use a template. I'm going to go click that. And we have a bunch of different templates here, five available today. 
Um, the one that I want to showcase right now is our marketing KPIs template. So let me go ahead and start from that template. It's going to ask me for two key events. So we have an activation event. Uh, let's go and just select sign up completed and a conversion event. Let's say purchase completed. There we go. Let's create the board. And what's going to happen here is in a matter of about three seconds, we're going to get a suite of reports pretty similar to some of the ones we just saw at, at acting as a starting point for us to get to insights quickly, get some metrics up that we can use, that we can to analyze, that we can take action off of. And we can also very easily iterate on this board as well. All these reports, we can click into them, we can edit them, we can iterate on them. We can go ahead and add in new reports, add in new content to this board, use it as a starting point to build off of and really tailor it to the metrics we want and to a structure that we care about. But you're starting from, you know, 0.60% instead of 0% the way there. So again, this is part of the reason how Mixpanel keeps you going fast to value. A lot of our features and a lot of the, the way our UI is structured is designed to make sure that you can get to value fast. This is just another piece in that whole equation. So one final thing I do want to call out, and just to summarize what we've been through so far yet again, uh, we've looked at ad data. We've looked at how we can apply multi-touch attribution models in Mixpanel now. We've looked at some example reports you can build out what a finalized table or dashboard for marketing might look like and how you can get to that quickly. Um, the last piece I think that's missing is this is all great, but how do we get some of that data in? How do we get that ad spend data in? How do we take some of the, uh, the, the, the insights that we generate from boards like this, export key cohorts of user segments we find into, say, a messaging platform or to be able to target them in an email? Because that's really what part of what marketers want to do as well, is discover key user segments for retargeting and go and reach out to them. So in that vein... We actually have a ton of integrations with places that you might want to export cohorts to um, and, and, and do that outreach, the outreach to as well. So for example, you can export to Braze, you can export to uh, Facebook and Google ads to retarget people in advertising. You can export to MailChimp, Marketo, all sorts of different marketing tools that you might be using today. So you can easily take that user data that you're discovering in Mixpanel and put it to work quickly and efficiently. So that's just something else I did want to call out. And to get your, your ad data into Mixpanel, we have a couple of very easy in integrations with these ad platforms as well. We have ways to pull your data into a Google Sheet quickly and easily send it into Mixpanel efficiently. Uh, and once you set up a, a link and a, and, a, and a kind of job with that, that takes your ad data from an ad platform and ships it into Mixpanel, that process then is, is a smooth, efficient, automatic recurring process. And we have a bunch of documentation on our site that details how that might go as well for you to look at. All right. And I think with that, that concludes today's demo. I hope you guys